So let's connect the power adapter and then check the 3 volt, 5 volt circuit. Let's put the black probe of the multimeter in the ground and check these two inductors. Here we have 5 volts and in the second inductor 3.3 volts. If we check the component next to inductor, we have 3.3 volts in the electrolytic capacitor and also in the test point or the pad 3.3 volts. The same for this channel. We have 5 volts in the inductor, 5 volts in the electrolytic capacitor, and of course we should find 5 volts in the test point or the pad means the circuit is a serviceable circuit. Let's connect the power adapter. Oops, we have a problem. We have a short circuit here. Let's confirm, let's do it again. 100% this motherboard is shorted. We have a short circuit here. Once we connect to plug, the LED is turned off. Means we have a short circuit. Hi, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to track voltages in a dead motherboard using the multimeter and the circuit diagram. I'm going also to teach you how to find a short circuit and solve it. So let's get started. So because the 3 volt and 5 volt circuit is the responsible for generating the primary voltages for the whole motherboard, we gonna first check this circuit. So as you can see here, we have 3 volt and 5 volt channels. So let's connect the adapter and then check whether we have 3 volt and 5 volt in this motherboard. By the way, this motherboard is a dead motherboard. I'm going to show you how to repair it step by step. So of course, we should set the multimeter to do DC voltage, as you can see, DC voltage. And of course, we're gonna select 20 volt because the adapter generates 19 volts. So let's select 20 volts in the multimeter and let's check the two inductors. Here, as you can see, we have ground everywhere in the motherboard. So let's put the black probe on the ground and then check using the red probe of the multimeter, these two inductors. So let's check the pad. We should get 5 volt. Basically, this is the 5 volt channel. As you can see, the multimeter will get 0 volt, means the 5 volt is missing. So let's check right now the 3.3 volt channel. So let's check the inductor. Nothing in the multimeter, as you can see. We get 0 volt in the multimeter, means also the 3.3 volt is missing. What should we do right now? We should confirm if the 19 volt is received by the motherboard or not. So let's check this inductor. Basically, this is the input. As you can see, we get 19 volt. We have 19 volt. So because we have 19 volt, normally we should get here 3 volt and 5 volt because the 3 volt and 5 volt voltages are always present in the motherboard once you connect the adapter without powering on the motherboard. So now if we go to the schematic, as you can see, this is the input voltage, the 19 volt for the 3 volt circuit, as you can see. And here also for the 5 volt channel, here we have the input voltage, the 19 volt, as you can see, we have plus V baht. So as you can see, we have two ceramic capacitors, as you can see, C10 for a 7 and C10 for a 6. Okay, we should find 19 volt in this capacitor and also in this MOSFET Q1009. The drain of this MOSFET should receive 19 volt. 
do the same for 3 volts as you can see channel we should find 19 volt in this cell capacitor C1062 and in the drain of this MOSFET Q1023 so let's see in the motherboard so as you can see here this is the 5 volt channel here we have inductor L3 here we have the pad pad 1 this is the electrolytic capacitor C21 and here we have ceramic capacitor C22 so in the back of this circuit we have the input component here we have two ceramic capacitors as you can see C1047 and C1046 and we have Q1009 normally if we check this ceramic capacitors in this side and the drain of this MOSFET we should get 19 volts okay so this is the source for this MOSFET here we have the gate as you can see and this is the drain four pins connected together so let's connect the adapter and let's check these two ceramic capacitors here we have zero volts normally we should find 19 volts so let's check the drain for this MOSFET normally we should get 19 volts the same we have 0 volt so the 3 volt 5 volt circuit does not receive the 19 volt so we should track this 19 volt from A to Z until we find the failed component So now I'm going to show you how to track the 19 volt from the power jack until the 3 volt 5 volt circuit using the multimeter and the circuit diagram. So this is the circuit diagram as you can see here we have the DC jack as you can see. Okay, the 19 volt will go directly past through the thermal capacitors and then goes to Q1002 and then goes directly until we get here plus V part. This plus V part will be distributed to the whole motherboard, to all circuit in the motherboard. Basically this plus V part is missing. We should find the field component. So let's connect the adapter once again. So the adapter is inserted, is connected to the motherboard. So we're gonna put of course the black probe of the multimeter in the ground everywhere in the motherboard so let's check the ceramic capacitor as you can see we have 19 volt let's check the second one we have 19 volt as you can see here we have inductor we should get 19 volt in both sides as you can see we get 19 volts in both sides exactly as we have in the schematic now if we go to this MOSFET Q10 Zero 02 as you can see in the schematic we should get 19 volt here in the source as you can see we have 19 volt in the source okay in three pins and of course let's check the gate we have the control signal this is the control signal so we have the 19 volt in the source and the control signal we should get 19 volt in the other side in the drain so let's check Oops, we have zero volts means here we have the problem this MOSFET is failed or we have a short circuit in this motherboard we have two options maybe this MOSFET is failed or we have a short circuit in the other side of MOSFET so let's check it out So as you can see I didn't find the same MOSFET with the same reference and I make just a bridge as you can see using a wire between the drain and the source just in order to troubleshoot and to find the problem. So here we have the adapter as you can see we have this 
we should you should always use th this kind of adapter in order to detect if you have a short circuit or, or not so let's connect to adapter ops do leds are turned off as you can see so let's do it again as you can see the two leds are on once we connect to adapter the light is switched off means we have a short circuit in this motherboard this is a 100 short circuit in this motherboard because the leds are switched off once we connect to adapter so i'm going to show you how to find the short circuit and how to solve it so this is basically the schematic so the short circuit is in this side as you can see the short circuit is in the side of the motherboard because once we make a bridge between source and drain we get a short circuit so we should check all this component so i'm going to show you how to find the short circuit step by step 